trailer loading is one of those skills that we often neglect until it's a problem, right? Until we're in a situation where the horse really needs to get in the trailer because there's a medical emergency or um, we just decided we wanna go somewhere, now we're on a timeline, all of those things. And so um, spending some time playing with the trailer, just like any other task or obstacle, will help events like that to be less stressful. So I like to park my trailer out here um, in the paddock so that um, the horses can explore it and, and be around it in a um, context that allows them to habituate, which means they have full agency. They can go to it if they feel like it or stay away from it if they want to. But either way, it allows the, the sight of the trailer to be um, less triggering. This is Kaya. She's a two year. She's two years old at this time, and um, I can get her in the trailer. That's not the point. The point is to teach her to be confident and curious about getting and being in the trailer. So she's been in the trailer. I hauled her home from Northeast Iowa, um, and she actually rode really well in there. It is a stock trailer, so it's open to the inside. You won't be able to see that in this video. Um, and the goal here is confidence and for the trailer to have less of a triggering effect. And in order for that to happen, we just need repetition. That's all. She just needs lots and lots of repetition. So I started the video by asking her to um, check the trailer out, right? Just go to the sides and put her nose on the door. When I did that on this side, she got curious about wanting to go in the trailer, at least look inside there, and I allowed it. I, at that point there, I hadn't asked her um, to go in the trailer. If I'm standing on the ramp, I'm probably not asking her to go in the trailer. You can't really see it because it's a side view, but the doors are open, and I'm really just hoping she'll either put her nose on the ramp or put her nose on the doors. And, you know, because she's a two-year-old, her attention span can be a little bit short. That's okay. So I just redirect. Every time um, she gets, um, you know, her attention pulled in a different direction, I give her a moment and then bring her back to the topic. And so the goal here is confidence and curiosity. It's not to get her in the trailer. The trailer conversation is a means to an end. It's not the end itself. The end is confidence and curiosity. The trailer is just something for us to use as a catalyst to get that conversation going. Now, she stopped there because I didn't let the rope slide quick enough. But you can see she's okay about getting in the trailer, but not about staying in the trailer. And this is a real common one. And what a lot of people will do is get them in there, and then hurry up and close the doors. Um, and that, I can, you know, if that's what you got to do because you got to, they got to get somewhere, then for sure do that, you know. But understand then, you're just getting it done. You're not making it better for future attempts. So all I do is I send her in because that part's working and I let her come out. I don't try to stop it or change it in any way because, because of the way that she comes out. She comes out in a rush, right? She's kind of... Um, uh, bolting out essentially and I like that she can turn around in my trailer and um, choose to come out nose first for now when she gets more confident about staying in the trailer then I'll ask her to back out now you can see there she came out that time with a lot more confidence so I'm gonna send her back in sooner because she's m more likely to be in a learning frame of mind than she was in the when she squirts out so that time it was a little, not quite as good as the last time, but I'm gonna experiment. Like, can I send you right back in and does that make it worse or does it make it better? It makes it better, ta-da! She turned around, but she chose to stop and think about it before coming out. I, I didn't do anything to cause that, that was her choosing. She, she just decided she could get to the edge and stop and look around and because that was um, what I wanted. I'm gonna let her off the hook here for a minute. Like, allow for a complete reset of the nervous system. Retreat is whatever it takes to allow the nervous system to reset, right? And by reset, I mean to go from being 
um, in a anticipatory mode where everything's sort of ready for fight or flight to a more casual mode where we're, you know, you know curious and confident. And so she does it again. She goes in. This time she turned around even more um, thoughtfully and slowly, and she stays um, at the back of the trailer even longer. And this time she stayed there so long that um, I was al allowed the opportunity to ask her to come out versus, you know, her saying, I got to get out of here. And for me, um, that's really what I was heading for. But I like to play with the rule of three, meaning can I get the outcome that I'm looking for the goal to happen three times in a row, ideally with progressive um, improvement with each attempt, right? So the first time she turned and stopped without coming out of the trailer was the um, attempt one. Then the second time um, was, you know, uh, when I asked her out, that's um, time number two. And then that last time there um, was um, the goal, right? So three times in a row with progressive um results right where it gets a little bit better each time then i was done with the trailer on this day so m my message to you is play with the trailer like it's any other obstacle like it's a jump like it's a pedestal like it's a car wash you know whatever um you like to play play with um in terms of obstacles so that when you are in a situation where it's a must, right, that you really need them to get in the trailer because you got to get down the road for whatever reason, um, it's a lot more likely to be a non-issue, right? M make, a, make a program of it and um, give your horses lots and lots of time to think their way through. The goal is confidence and curiosity.